Hello, everyone, and welcome to the International Relations uh, portion of your online seminar. So this section is definitely the, the heftiest uh, section of, of all of the ones that you're going to be completing. Um, all, from start to finish, the IR portion of this will take you about an hour. Um, we're going to spend some time on course mastery, and there's an activity that goes along with that. That should take about 20 minutes. And then we are going to actually hear from some new authors for an exciting new first edition that we have in IR, uh, along with another activity. That should take another 20 minutes. Um, and then we'll take about 20 minutes at the end to dig into uh, competition. So let's get started, shall we? So welcome to IR Course Mastery 101. Um, today we're going to discuss the ins and outs of international relations. Along the way, we will cover common course outcomes and goals assess the different needs of instructors and where we can offer solutions, uh, and help ease the apprehension that you may or may not be having uh, in calling on IR instructors. So let's get started. Okay, so as you can see here, uh, the Intro to IR course is most commonly found um, as a freshman or sophomore level course. Um, There's about 350,000 students a year who take this course. Uh, making it the second largest course in political science that you will call on. Um, it is most often a mix of majors and non-majors, right? So that adds a whole different level, level or dynamic to, to this course. So it's a mix of majors and non-majors. Uh, many of non-majors will take this course as a gen ed requirement. And for a lot of those folks, it's actually the first and possibly only political science course that they will ever take. Um, it's, it's often a requirement for international studies majors. Um, and, and like I said, in many cases, it's, it's one of the first political science courses that they will take. Okay, course outcomes. Well, the course outcomes uh, really vary from school to school, instructor to instructor, and book to book. But, but the following really represent the end goals of most IR instructors. So this is most typically what, what they're after. Um, they want their students to be able to articulate the foundations of, of IR, uh, including its history, theories, key constructs, and foreign policy process. They want their students to be able to evaluate issues related to war, terrorism, and other forms of conflict, including causes, consequences, negotiating peace, and prevention. They strive to recognize the influences on and impact of economic issues, including debt and investment, development, currency exchange, and trade, and um, they want their students to analyze important current questions in IR, um, including those related to human rights, international law, and the environment. So this is really kind of at the high level um, uh, list of, of course outcomes. So let's dig in a little bit. All right, so understanding the foundations of IR. Right, so first and foremost, students need to understand the history of IR. For instructors, this means students should illustrate important periods, events, and trends in international relations and their influence on today's world. What factors influence decision-making in the past? Can students compare and contrast to today? Who were the key players back then? And how have the key players changed over time? So questions like this. Second are theories. Okay, theory is really important in this course. Foundations include theories of international relations analogies and constructs that help facilitate the analysis and understanding of important international issues. This can range from conversations around liberalism, realism, constructivism, and more. And for those of you who were at the last sales meeting, remember we had everybody wearing those, those hats with realism, liberalism, and constructivism. Those are, those are kind of the main theories that we're talking about in IR. Um, and as you're gonna hear in a little while from our author, uh, uh, Ralph Carter, many students at first are actually really intimidated by theory. Um, in this course, but in reality, theory is actually our friend. Theory helps us make sense of very complex and often troubling things like international conflict and war. Um, and so, so really making, you know, giving students a, a real comfort level with theory is, is really center, central to this course. Finally is foreign policy. Um, of course, learning how the sausage is made is important, the process and specifics around key players, but equally as important are the influences around decision-making, things like public opinion, the role of bureaucracies, and special interest groups. Okay. 
Course outcome number two, evaluating all aspects of war, terrorism, and other forms of conflict. So for international conflict, students often need to use the theories that, that they've learned to distinguish the causes of war, to compare just wars and wars of aggression, to discuss the formation, maintenance, and importance of international alliances, and to critique efforts on the spread of nuclear weapons. For the second part of this outcome, terrorism and domestic conflict, students are often asked to outline common factors in the development and resolution of civil war, to critique common definitions of terrorism and their causes and prevention strategies, and to discuss the role of the United Nations and of international law in responding to both. Recognizing the impact of the economy, right? Money makes the world go round. The international trade portion of the course requires students to trace the globalization of trade, including factors, actors, and consequences, identify why there is resistance to international trade, look at policies that interfere with free trade, and finally, to discuss the role of the World Trade Organization. When looking at global business and finance, students need to analyze causes of global finance crisis, like in 2008, look at exchange rate systems and forecast the future economic growth of countries around the world. But more than just countries, students must also critique the power and influence of multinational corporations. Fascinating. So questions, current ongoing questions in IR. These questions are a huge factor in IR, specifically questions that students care most about, including what's the role of international law? in ensuring the protection of human rights. Uh, international efforts related to global environments and climate change and other various issues related to the future of international relations, like the effects of globalization, the role of developed nations in foreign aid, and even the status of the European Union. These are all things and big enduring questions that, that they, they talk about and focus on in IR. So we talked about course outcomes. Let's talk a little bit about instructor needs in this course. So these are the types of things that you're gonna be talking about in conversation, that you're gonna be asking about when you, in your questioning strategy. Um, first is current events, right? Um, so obviously with this course and everything changing so rapidly um, in, in our world today, um, keeping current and discussing current events is, is a very important part of this course. Um, and not, um, in addition to that, um, theory covered. So we talked about theory as being a very central um, course uh, uh, outcome uh, for, for this course. And so they need um, that content, that theory, that theory content and theory coverage. Um, uh, so just as a, as a response to these two things, uh, the first two listed here, um, our books are actually on a two year on two year cycles to capture the most recent material in international relations. Um, and we also have Lecture Spark. So remember, we were talking about Lecture Spark for American government. Well, this fall, we're actually rolling it out for international relations as well. We'll be getting you some more information about that. But again, remember, this is a free, open access database of, of current event sources built around the most cutting edge, current, up to date stories. Um, and it includes assessment, quizzing, PowerPoint slides, and, and everything that, a, uh, that an instructor would need to basically integrate this little mini lecture around current events in their course. And now you have it for IR. So it's a great good guy strategy. We'll be talking to you more about it, but just keep that in mind. Um, and again, you know, talking about theory coverage, whether it's light or heavy on theory, instructors will say that, um, that, that they have a preference, whether they want to go heavy or light with theory. Um, however they, how, however they want to teach, um, you know, you have books for both now. So obviously, as we talked about at the last sales meeting, if, if an instructor really likes to focus on theory, really heavy, extensive theory coverage, then you're going to go with Henry Now's book, International Relations or Perspectives on International Relations. And super excited, and we're going to be spending a lot of time today talking about this. We have a new IR book for you. It's an introductory book that actually is a pretty light application of theory coverage. And it's by Jim Scott, who are you are going to be hearing from in just a few minutes and meeting in person at the sales meeting. Um, so the, the next one here is application to the real world, right? So it's this whole idea of relevancy. Students can learn all of this, but unless you make it relevant and connect it to their lives, it's not really going to sink in. Um, so instructors will say that they want content um, uh, that they want to, um, sorry, they want to teach their students how to apply concepts um, to, to the real world scenarios. 
Um, and concepts covered in both Now and Scott are tied to real world applications, perhaps more so in Scott, because he has features like Spotlight On, Spotlight On, which you're gonna learn about in a little bit, that raises real world stories to explain more complex topics. And then of course, um, a foundational cornerstone that's really gaining more momentum in IR and that you're gonna be hearing about more and more is geography. Most often you hear instructors talk about the fact that they um, that their students don't really have a good uh, sense of geography when they come into the class and that, that can be a real challenge when you're trying to talk about international relations. Um, and so um, pinpointing maps and geography features in your sales call will put, it, put an instructor's mind at ease um, and, and that they, and, you know, letting them know that they're not going to actually have to teach geography on top of IR. Um, great news for you, the Scott IR book um, has a special feature box called the Revenge of Geography, which incorporates maps, mapping exercises, and discussion questions alongside a case, demonst a case demonstrating how geography can influence IR. This is an incredibly popular feature. Um, and so just know when this does come up in your call, you've got something to, to meet that need. Okay, so let's, let's get real. Of all the courses that you sell in, um, in political science and beyond, international relations can be one of the more intimidating ones, right? I always talk about these, the international relations instructors. When you, when you go into a department, a political science department, it's so easy to tell <laughs> the Americanists apart from the IR uh, instructors. They're the ones who always seem to be wearing their tie, right? Um, they can be pretty intense. The conversation can be intense. Um, you know, they want to talk about a lot of kind of current events and international conflict. Um, it's, it's a really complex course. Um, and it's tough not to get hung up on theory and complexity when you're selling an IR. Um, and right, sure, theory is, is one part of the course, a foundational aspect to be sure. But ultimately, IR um, is a way to explain certain interactions on a global scale. Okay, so this is really how you want to be thinking about IR. Those interactions have to do with states or, as we say, nations, countries, and non-state actors like the UN or Amnesty Inter International. So, I mean, ultimately, ultimately, this this is really what's at the heart of it. It's 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 actually pretty simple, and there's there's really nothing to fear in IR other than the current state of, of world events. But that's nothing that we can <laughs> that we can fix, right? Um, so just don't be intimidated by these calls. They're fascinating, folks. It's a fascinating subject. Um, so just go ahead and jump right in. So that concludes the the lecture part of this. Um, so. Uh, as we, as I mentioned, you do have a couple activities um, that you're going to be completing in this IR uh, module. Um, the first, which you're going to complete right directly after after this mini mini lecture is done, uh, we want you to really consider the course outcomes that we talked about. We want you to fill in two discovery questions: one current state and one desired state question. Please be specific to IR. We don't want these to be the same generic current state, desired state questions that you, know, that you could ask in any call. We want some really good ones that are specific to IR. And then after that, you are going to watch a mock sales call with myself, Erica DeLuca, and my friend, Jennifer Jones. Uh, we will be playing <laughs> instructor and, and uh, perf uh, uh, sales rep. And at, throughout the video, um, there are going to be little indicators that pop that up that let you know when to pause the video. So when you when you see that, pause the video, and we want you to identify the gap that that just that was just that just came up in that sales call. Um, and so you'll have three different gaps that you need to identify. Um, really pay close attention to that because the last exercise is actually going to come later in the module. First, you're going to get a chance to hear from um, our authors. Um, they're going to be talking about their book, the new IR book. But after that, you're going to have an opportunity to actually match up the features of the book, which the authors kind of talked about, and you'll have a tool that lists all the different features in the book with the gaps that you identified from the mock sales call. So, um, and I just want to let you know too, when you do hear from the authors, it, it is a really great candid interview. We didn't want to make it too long. So, but you, you know, it's not a huge in-depth dive into the book. It's just a real high level overview. I want to remind you that when you come to the sales meeting, you're going to have an entire hour with Jim Scott, and he is going to go through all the ins and outs and intricacies of the book. So this is really just meant to be a quick overview, a little teaser of what's to come. So buckle up and enjoy the ride.